<laughs> didn't even realise the mic was on. <laughs> Hi guys, I'll, I'll talk. I have no idea how the software works, I'm just testing it. Okay, maybe someone can tell me. How, how did you see this? I guess you just got a notification, right? Yeah, thanks, Mark. <laughs> okay, yeah, I I do appreciate that. I, I you know I'm very conscious that um, that I haven't um, put out any video for a long time. I actually have a, a room upstairs uh, which we don't use. And uh, one wall is stacked pretty pretty much about half height and about a meter and a half wide full of equipment and tear downs and test equipment and all sorts of stuff that uh, that I just need to do something with so um, so yeah I will definitely get back to it but as I said uh, work commitments um, have taken uh, taken priority and unfortunately that's taken up pretty much all of my time but I'm just playing out this um, live streaming just because uh, if I if I can save the time editing and I can set up a couple of cameras and just generally get things set up so I can just get on and do it and maybe live stream the content that will be a lot easier for me I do appreciate you guys all uh, staying up I, I have uh, observed my followers uh, my following has uh, remained pretty much the same so that's awesome guys thank you try this. Alright, as you can see, I think you can see there's still a big mess behind me. Loads of, loads of stuff. Um, yeah, it's still here. I think that works. Yeah, Mark, I think um, I, think I can um, just put the content out and record the stream. Um, and I think I think I mean, that's why I'm just trying to play about with the software. I think the um, um, YouTube will then automatically record that and publish it straight to my YouTube channel. So um, obviously you don't have to be around for me to, um, um, the, to you know the time that I stream. Um, the uh, okay KS uh, HS thank you seeing the video. Yeah, if I uh, if I just do live streaming, um, I, there's an option here somewhere I'm sure that can. Uh, save the um, uh, save the video so you don't have to be there uh, for me it's just more convenient because I don't have to um, go through the whole process of setting up the cameras uh, bringing the raw footage into um, uh, an editing tool uh, you know editing it down um, and so on then encoding it and uploading it to YouTube uh, that all takes a surprisingly long amount of time Hang on a minute. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it takes actually a surprising, a surprising amount of time doing that, um, and uh, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to that. So I'll sit there and peek and poke it around a bit, and you know, try and edit it down, and, you know, make it, make it, you know, compact as I can, because I do tend to waffle a bit, as I'm sure any anyone that's watched any of my videos will know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just poking around with these options, so I'm sorry. This is a very, very unexciting stream. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll kill it off in a minute, or I'll, I'll call it, call it, close in a minute. Um, but thanks for, thanks for dropping by and saying hello. Let me know you're still there. <laughs>
Yeah. Oh, I mean, um, let me ask a, a question. I guess there's a few of you on. There's, uh, there's only 13 people looking, so I'm not very popular. Uh, what, what's uh, what sort of content? Um, you know, produced a fair, fairly, fairly sort of broad range of content, I guess, all electronics by, uh, around. But um, was it the sort of tear down and repairs? Was it the troubleshooting? Was it the um, electronics design and um, you know, creating stuff and making stuff? What, what was interesting? Interesting to watch. Yep. Yeah, okay. Tear downs and repairs. Well, I've got quite a bit of agilent um, equipment um, yeah, kicking around that I probably ought to repair. Yeah, the power supply. Um, hi, Maria. Um, yeah, the power supply. Um, mm, yeah, <laughs> uh, it's a big commitment. I, I kind of brought it. I brought it to an end. It's still it's still up here on my um, on my shelf. Um, uh, not brought it to an end, but I kind of it run its course. I, I've actually got a whole set of. Um, I'm not sure I even know if they're up there. Hold uh, on a second. Just so people don't uh, think I'm telling fibs, this is actually the next version of the PCB. Um, but in the end, um, I, I didn't really like the format, the physical format. So uh, yeah, I, can't, I kind of stopped building. I mean, it is it is working, and um, um, it works actually really well. The design. Um, so you know, people can take it. I've published everything, pretty much everything. Um, I wouldn't say. The board is the most usable um, layout. I'm not sure that's the newest board actually. Bit of a mess. I'll find it. Find it one day. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say that the, the PCB is the best layout. I'm not particularly happy with it. So the actual design uh, was okay, but the um, you know the physical the physical layout. By the time um, it got. This actually ended up quite being quite a big lump, really, and that's just a single channel. So to get three channels of those into a box that you could reasonably put on your desk seemed a bit un, uh, unwieldy, really, in the end. And so I probably ought to rethink that if I'm ever going to do anything with it again and take it on to the next level. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of where I got with it, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I'll try and build some other stuff like that. Um, oh, so I'm, just, oh, so I'm just catching up with the um, so test gear repairs. Yeah, everyone likes the repairs. The oh, the really rubidium standard distribution. Yeah, that that was quite a funny story. That was because um, I I actually built that the day before I went on leave. Uh, so I <laughs> I gave myself a day to do it and. Um, you know those few hours, and in the end, I can't remember now. I spent five or six hours in the you know time elapsed was about nine hours because I obviously didn't just work at it all the time. I had a family life to, to live as well. So um, yeah, that was uh, quite an interesting. Part. I like I like doing those myself because um, they are um, they're interesting um, uh, projects. You know, you get something that's actually usable, and I've actually used it a ton. Um, since, because um, for anyone that knows, uh, would have seen the videos where I've made a. Um, I've got one to add to. The problem, yeah, one of made these things. Uh, yeah, these things. Uh, this one's actually funny enough. I was troubleshooting this. I, I unbelie unbelievably ended up with a batch of LT chips that are faulty. Yeah, well, there we go. Uh, yeah, I ended up selling selling a whole ton of these, and people keep on buying them, for which I'm very appreciative because it helps paying for all the rubbish I keep on buying to um, to do something with on the channel. Uh, but yeah, I ended up selling quite a lot of these and continue to sell quite a lot of these. So I've used the Rubidium standard and and uh, sort of built uh, um, a kind of test jig because I make enough of them that uh, that I, I need it. Yeah, it's kind of so that's how that turned out. And the electronics. Um, 
power supply. Where else? Are there? Uh, Mark, where you want a couple of those boards? Uh, honestly, I'm not sure you do really. <laughs> um, I've got. Uh, I think I think these are the old ones. Where uh, these power supply boards? These ones are the old ones. But I've got eight or ten. I think I have made of the next revision. But I've never built one, so I don't even know if they they work. But basically, if you remember. Um, sorry, I'm just using a webcam, so the, the quality here is really, really terrible. It's just what's in the in the Mac. If you remember, I, I hacked in a lot of components around this, getting it working. I ended up not using this and putting in hardware and stuff. So, uh, so the next version of the board, um, which I which I cut and got made, I don't even know if it works. Um, <laughs> so, I'll, I'll, it wouldn't be wise for anyone to to build. Build it off of that. Um, you know, I know a lot of people are interested in this. And the problem with this design is, it's the concept was nice for it to be modular and completely standalone, but the power components really just turn it into something much more bulky. And um, um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, I'll, I'll try and do something with it. I know I'd, I'd, I'd like to build a different kind of power supply and uh, rethink the design, particularly the physical layout. Um, I also don't like the heat dissipation of this. I mean, it's fine on the linear regulator, but actually, I'd like to um, put a pre pre regulator in front of it using a switching um, or a, a switching um, buck regulator of some form, um, just to pr improve the efficiency of it. Uh, that would also, if I can do that, um, I can put the um, um, I can reduce the size of all the, the thermal stuff because it'll all it'll just reduce down if uh, if the regular if the linear part of the regulator only has to deal with a three or four volt you know uh, variation drop then that drops a, a hell of a lot pa less power across the um, the heat dissipating components um, and we improve the design and the size of the design efficiently so you know. um, water cooled power supply yeah just throw it in a bucket. <laughs> um, yeah, it's too complicated. I mean, you know, power supply really is a you know a most important tool. Uh, I've got a stack of them up there, as you can see. And uh, if I can't really show you to the right, but, but to my right here, I've got another. Uh, to my right, where am I here? Yeah, yeah. So to my right here, um, yeah, uh, over over here, I've got another stack of um, power supplies, uh, dummy load, oscilloscope, and so on. Um, so yeah, they're they're very they're very useful, and as you can see, I'm using Agilent supplies there. None of them are my own. I haven't quite got it finished to the point where it could be working. Uh, walk up there, trying to film. Do it for long tune now. This does not matter. Yeah, thanks, Moro. You know, I've got a whole bunch of interesting stuff. Um, so one of the things in in working on this uh, this frequency um, yeah, stuff, I've actually got a Trimble uh, GPS, and I think a couple of weeks ago, my, me and my son were up on uh, my, my young son were up on uh, on the roof putting up a GPS timing timing antenna, and that's all piped in back into the garage, which is just just there behind there. So I just need to bring it in here. Um, this I didn't really. I was only testing a streaming. I've got into making a, a a live stream, but there we go. So this uh, this I bought this. Um, I think it came from Taiwan, uh, but it was very, very cheap. Um, this is you see these selling on eBay for about four thousand dollars or so, and uh, this one works. Nothing wrong with it, and I paid not very much for it at all. I think about a hundred bucks, and uh, it's a it's a very nice. It's a classic, classic, really nicely built HP Agilent piece of kit. Um, it's designed for testing cell phones. Um, it's quite old now. Uh, you know, it doesn't do a lot of the modern standards, but it does deal with Bluetooth. Um, anyway, the truth be known, it's, um, it's it would be a make, make a really nice teardown, um, but it's not really very useful for anything. So um, I'm um, probably going to gut this and uh, try and well, I'll have a look at the electronics behind the screen, see if I can and um, see how that's how that works, and see if I can hook that back up to something that I can use. Like a Raspberry Pi or something like that, um, and uh, I'm going to use this as a as a donor chassis or a donor enclosure for putting in GPS 
and Rubidium timing probably into this. So I've got something that's, that fits on my bench that is uh, a bit nice. This is a really nicely built piece of kit. There's a whole bunch of really nice RF goodness in there, and uh, which I've also got to play with. And I'm no RF expert, but I did at some point in the last couple of years buy um, an Agilent um, free, uh, um, signal generator and um, uh, spectrum analyzer. And they, uh, you see, they are the N9310, and the N9320, I think, or 23. Anyway, I'll, I'll use them for something. So, yeah, there's going to be some interesting stuff to play around with there. As I said, I, honestly, I've got a ton of stuff that I could play with, so... Oh, what else to say? Uh, that Keithy under the table. What Keithy is that? This this one. This Keithy meter under here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry about the mess here. It's more like a little manufacturing lab than a, than a lab. Yeah, it's just uh, <laughs> uh, over to my left here. I've got. What looks as it's a bit nicer looking than Dexium racking, but it's a wall full of Dexium racking. And um, I've also bought some um, um, some liquid, not liquidated stock. Just wear just wear a couple of labs of shut down. Um, and uh, so I've got actually uh, I don't know, I don't know what there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 12 or so um, 53131A frequency counters are all pretty much as new. Um, there's another couple of um, Haymake uh, frequency counters. There's some um, 33, what are they? What's the meters called? 34401A's or some of those. I haven't really been through any of them, but they've just, I've just sort of stacked them all up there. Uh, maybe what I'll do is um, at some point is I'll grab my other camera and uh, do, a, do a quick video on all the stuff that I've got kicking around here that I need to do something with. But, uh, yeah, so that's the key thing. It works perfectly. I, I bought... Um, where did I get this? I, if you see, I actually use one of these. Up here. Um, and I bought that, and that was actually... So uh, that's the one that does the THD uh, measurement, and then I saw another one, and I just bought it. <laughs> Not quite sure what I'm going to do with it, but there we go. Uh, I really ought to get some of this stuff and start selling it. And, uh, yeah, because it's a bit of a waste having it all sitting here. Um, Mark, yeah, that that um, that was a real score. Uh, this, uh, if anyone wants to look it up, it's an N N four zero one zero A. You can see what it does. Not very practical for day to day use. I think if you've got a factory repairing or um, testing, manufacturing phones, it's pretty handy. Um, it's all driven by software really, so this is just the, the, the outboard electronics bit interface to uh, to the software. Uh, I don't have any of the software or anything, I don't really have a use for it, so unless, unless anyone's got $4,000 and has a real need for it, or even <laughs> $2,000, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of put it apart and use it as a case. I think. Uh, are you going to do another attempt? Um, Yes, uh, so tech spec, yeah, that's what I was just talking about. I'm, I've actually um, I found, I found a problem with the Rubidium um, standard. Its short-term stability is pretty poor. Um, it uses a DDS uh, chip inside to scale down the, um, or to phase lock the, um, the frequency, the Rubidium frequency, which is, I can't remember what it is, it's you know, 800 megahertz or something. Um, and those things need calibrating. They're not. They're not precise. They're not like um, a cesium standard where it's a predictable frequency. They're there or thereabouts, but they they can vary depending on the physics uh, package. So, so the DDS chip, um, if you observe it now, I've now started to sort of use a lot of these high stability oscillators and observe them. Um, what you see is that the um, rubidium, depending and and probably not all of them do it, but if if you think about it, it's using a, a sort of uh, N accumulation um, DDS chip to to work out the precise frequency that it's outputting, which is programmable, and that's how you can calibrate them. Um, but because you know it, things that are digital are ultimately have to be even, and so as soon as you get an odd number, 
the thing has to correct. And on my particular one now, once every it's not it's not consistent, it's not like a heartbeat, but somewhere once every twenty or thirty seconds, somewhere in that sort of order. And sometimes there can be two or three in a ten second window, and other times there'll be one in a whole thirty second window. So so it's obviously some kind of large digital counter that's you know, whatever it's doing. Um, it um, it just bumps the output frequency by one cycle for about you know a hundredth of a second or so, um, and so so the the, the short term phase noise of it is actually pretty poor, um, as it turns out. So the the um, I, I want to build something to to fix that. I want to do some f frequency locking um, to this rather than phase locking. Phase locking. Uh, I can either do phase locking with long a uh, long term holdover or do frequency locking which is um you know long term average counting which would iron out that and also give you a much better um um long uh, short term phase noise uh, with something like this so so anyway uh, I have got a one of these this is a a trimble Thunderbolt, which is a GPS disciplined basic, basically, you know, excuse me one sec. just a, a GPS disciplined uh, oven control oscillator. Uh, of course, it needs a GPS antenna, and uh, the more the more um, GPS signals it can lock to, then the um, the more accurate it becomes. And that, this has obviously, you know, national standard. Um, equivalent frequency standard. You know, it's very, very, very good. Um, it's as all you know, people have different views, but it's you know from from a precision point of view, it's as good as the national standards you know, based on cesium standards. Um, but it because it's a disciplined um, uh, oven control oscillator, then it's long, it's short term stability is actually and phase noise is actually very, very good. So yeah, that's the plan is to get this, um, get the rubidium, probably re 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 use that, get it, get it all into a, a case that's got some, you know, I've got six outputs there that I can use for get it into this, get some software up and running to allow this to be used for the control panel, get a couple of uh, front facing uh, 10 megahertz or 10 and 1 megahertz or 10 and 1 PPS, not quite sure, outputs here. Not quite sure with that, but I'm, I'm sure I can refactor this to to just tidy up my bench a little bit. I guess. Anyway, that's that's you know you know what these things are like. This is a plan, um, not necessarily uh, a thing. Uh, 2015 THC you bought is a something like that. Anything you bought is a. Fermi, I'm not quite sure what the word means, Mark. I don't know what you mean by Fermi. Um, sorry, I'm being a bit thick here. You know? I bought a second to you know, myself, and the guy it turns out to be. Oh, he turns out to be some skill disputing over the eBay. Oh, no, um, yeah, fair point. Actually, the guy I bought it from did, he was somewhere up in the Midlands. Um, he did have um, um, some, um, yeah, a few of them. So, So maybe, I don't know, he was fine with me. Uh, I didn't have any problems at all. I'll be honest. Hey Ian, how you doing? Good to good to hear from you. Sorry, uh, I've I've watched a few videos you put out. Um, haven't been around myself put, putting content out there today. I actually came on here uh, testing uh, testing live streaming, and uh, and there we go. Um, uh, people start talking to me, so here I'm chatting. You won't shut me up now. But, uh, yeah, nice to hear from you. Ed. Hey Frederick. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, well, I, I, you know, I, as, as I say, you know, you know I, I can't uh, repeat this enough. I actually love producing this content and messing about with electronics. It's uh, it's one of those weird things. It's a, a real passion of mine. I love electronics, um, and you know, even computer software. But the, truthfully, I have to also um, make a living, and it's not really making a living. I have a responsibility to to you know a small workforce, and. Um, you know, we've we've been through a, a really big, um, interesting, and very exciting transition at work, where we've basically moved from having 
selling on-premise software. We do business-to-business -business software is what we do. And transitioning that into a cloud-based um, uh, solution, and that for anyone that knows anything about that stuff, you'll find is um, you know it's te technology. Technology is a big is 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 a difficult element of it, but it's not in any way, shape, or form the big part of it. Um, it's the um, it's the re-engineering of the business, the way the business works. It's a total transition in the uh, financial model and the way the um, finances for the business work. Um, and it's a big commitment to make. Um, in truth, probably a lot bigger than I appreciated. But, but there we go. Um, that's uh, that's how we take this in. So, I, so I've had to focus on that. It's been really, really important. And uh, you know, it's worked out pretty well, I have to say. Um, but I'm not over the line yet, as it as it were, in terms of um, you know having um, having got it done. Anyway, I won't bore you with that. But that's that's really why I haven't been able to do this stuff. I can't. Um, even if I produce video like like this, it's, it would be ad hoc and it wouldn't be very good. You know, just me be me waffling. And in terms of planning projects, um, you know, and actually you know, sourcing parts and getting all the stuff um, ready to to do stuff like that, it's it's more difficult. Yeah. Hi, Burkhead. Nice to see you again. As I'm still alive. Yes, I haven't died. Nothing, nothing, nothing quite like that. Just uh, just uh, work commitments. I'm trying to diet too. Yeah, water. This would normally be a cup of tea or maybe a beer <laughs> or a can of coke. But uh, for me at the moment, it's um, water. Um, <clears throat> it might might be interesting or boring. It's got nothing to do with electronics. But um, I tried an experiment. Um, I guess for those of you that watch, know that uh, I like feeling about stuff. So I tried an experiment with my own health, and um, last Wednesday. Um, I embarked on a what was going to be a 10-day water fast. And for those of you that don't know what that is, that basically means that um, from Wednesday onwards, I, I consumed nothing but water. Um, and it, it was actually um, it was a lot uh, easier and a lot easier to do than I thought it would be. Um, but um, I've just uh, just yesterday started to um, reverse that because um, there is a lot of dangers associated with that. Um, uh, doing that kind of a aggressive diet or extreme diet, as they're, they're often known, um, because once your body, um, this is I kind of read about this, didn't really understand it in this detail before, but basically when you're you know, if you're, you're, you use carbohydrates basically for energy, so that's all the stuff that we will love the taste of. And um, when you um, stop consuming carbs and protein, well, your body needs both. And um, so after your initial hunger, um, your body kind of figures out that you're not going to feed anymore. So it shuts down, it goes into hibernation, the same as what a, a, bear, a bear will do when it eats, eats uh, for the summer and goes to sleep for the winter. And then... Um, um, your body goes into a, a mode called ketosis, which basically means your body feeds on itself. Um, and unfortunately, it's not; it's, it won't just consume your excess fat because uh, I'm overweight and I need to, to fix that. Um, it will actually; it needs your, particularly your brain, um, but, but, but for energy, it needs protein. And so, the only place it can get protein is your lean muscle. And um, your body doesn't really differentiate between the muscle in your arm, say, and um, the muscle in your um, heart, <laughs> for example. So the, the effect is while you're fasting and while you're in this mode, your actual body is eating your organs. Now, you know, before that sounds really drastic, we're talking about, you know, a few grams here. We're not talking about, you know, kilograms a day or anything like that. But, uh, but it's generally recommended not to do um, so I, anyway, I've, I, I've, I thought I'd give it a try. Um, a lot of what they report is actually true. You know, I went through a phase of um, I guess I was feeding off of the food that I already had and the, the, gly the glycose in my liver and so on. But on about day four, I got lots of aches and pains, and that was that was kind of what they described, and that's particularly true around any anywhere where you got a lot of muscle, uh, legs, and also lower back where your kidneys are. And then um, then it kind of transitioned into a mode of um, actually almost elation it's hard to hard to describe so no longer hungry no longer dependent on food 
uh, energy levels went up. Um, and, um, you know, it just, just generally felt really good. Um, I could have, to be honest with you, I, I had no need to stop other than I, um, I decided to stop. Uh, hello, my, my son's just going to walk in and give me a hug. I'm live streaming on YouTube, Connor. Do you want to say hello? Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Sorry about that. Good night. Um, so um, he's got school tomorrow, so he to stop. So yeah, so I, tr I tried that. It was quite an interesting experiment. And now I've got a, probably five days or so where um, where I need to get myself back into the ability to uh, actually eat and digest food. So uh, so that's what I'm currently doing. Um, what have we got? Hey, Dexter's lab. Um, yeah, I'm not really making videos, uh, Dexter. I, I started testing streaming, and someone started talking to me. So, so here I am again. So, uh, yes, thank you. Um, hey, Fabio, nice to see you. Say so what now, ninety two? Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, he's Mark. He's he's gone already. Uh, um, Ian, is he interested in electronics? You know, the thing is, I'll, I'll uh, hopefully he's not there. I'll, I'll just close the door and I'll say this. Uh, thing is, he's really bright, but uh, he's a typical boy, and I'm afraid follows in my footsteps. He's incredibly lazy at his age. Um, so he's he's right into games. Um, spends a lot of time on his computer, or as much time as we let him. Um, but at, at the age of six, I, I, I taught him um, uh, basics of digital logic, just the basic math behind it, you know, to, to, to input the gates and so on. And, uh, you know, he picked that stuff and recited it off, um, and, you know, and then he, he can reel that off with no problem. Then I got him building some stuff on a breadboard, same stuff, just testing that. Uh, really adapts to it very quickly. But to be fair, he's academically very good anyway in, in all his subjects, seemingly, and that's everything English, math. Um, he gets, you know, quite good reports from from school. Uh, we're very, very, very lucky. Yeah, very lucky. He's uh, so has it, so. I'd, I'd say he could be good at electronics engineering, um, but what's missing from him, and what was really present in me at his age, was he has no particular desire or interest. Uh, he's capable, but he can't be bothered. So, <laughs> so, uh, so we'll see. I, I don't expect that he'll, he'll take that um, take that up. Uh, I expect he'll do. Uh, it's like it seems to me that he'll probably end up in some kind of gaming, probably programming area. He's got all the academic skills. He's def definitely got the right mind for it. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. So it's a good, it's a good question, Ian. But uh, no, at the moment he he doesn't come into this room and his eyes don't light up. He just says, "What is all this mess you've got in here? And what do you need it all for? And why do you keep on buying this stuff?" <laughs> so, uh, so that's what we're into that. Um, hey Herman, how you doing? Long time no see. Yes, um, back. I'm not sure, Herman. I was just explaining earlier. I was just testing some live streaming. People started talking, so I'm. Uh, I'm uh, being respectful and talking back. Uh, it's quite nice, it's quite interesting. I've not done any live streaming before, so I was just testing it. Um, so um, I, I have got a ton of stuff to do. Uh, as I say, work commitments were the um, 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 yeah, work commitments um, have really taken taken the time, really. And I have to do that not just for me or for my own. Um, you know, financial success or anything, but uh, I do have a lot of people, um, or enough people, um, uh, depending on what we do at work, um, you know, to, to feed their kids and pay their mortgages and stuff, so it'd be very irresponsible of me for not to focus on that and make sure it works. Um, and it's taken a long time, uh, take at least two years to see the benefit of the diet body in these times of just. Tom, Tom, yes, that's true. That's true. The pro problem with me um, is I actually like food, um, and so if I'm if I don't think about it and concentrate on it, I end up eating more food than I should. Um, I am I do work in a in a business to business type of uh, environment, so I, I I get dragged out to see um, um, you know clients and you know do stuff, which generally means I if I wanted to I could be eating out five days a week, and I. Obviously, that's not very good because you see those nice menus in those 
good restaurants and stuff, it's pretty easy to, to um, get carried away. But uh, yeah. Um, hi Eddie from Belgium. Cheers, thank you. Herman, yeah, no problem. I, I, you know, as, as I said earlier on, I have got a ton of stuff, a load of projects I'd like to do. Um, I just just time. It's just just time, and as I as I mentioned before, work commitments are still there and, and taking pretty much all my time. Uh, and pr if in truth, uh, probably will take most of this year as well. Um, the way it's looking at the moment. But um, the reason why I'm looking at the streaming is if I can just spin up a live stream, have it auto record. And then just and, and just get on and do stuff. Um, I'm using a piece of software called OBS Studio, uh, which is used um, by gamers uh, to you know to play back videos. I know about this because my son told me about it. So there you go, my 13-year-old son pointed me at some software. Um, so it's really cool because you can have very various input sources. And as I'm talking to you now, I can simply transition like that, and I can push you over to different content or different cameras and so on. Um, and uh, you know I could um, uh, share screens or you know share software screens or so on and so forth. So yeah, it's, uh, it, to me, if I can get myself set up in a way um, that that I don't have to move cameras around and do all the post editing that goes along with trying to produce YouTube video and, and adopt more of a live broadcast format, then you know it's not like I work 24 hours a day, but I do. I, you know, I, I, I have very limited, uh, let's call it playtime for want of a better word, um, you know, and, and I've, I've built some stuff, you know, I've worked on some, just, <laughs> just trying to look around, trying to think, well, um, I've poked around with quite a few bits and pieces, um, uh, this, this, was, this was something I was, I was prototyping, um, which involved mainly writing software, but this is, uh, this is actually a test jig for these things. Uh, so at the moment I use a, an actual counter with all its guts open and I plug these things in to test them um, just to make sure there's no shorts or nothing that I've missed and so on. And it, it's, it's not very, I've blown the counter up a couple of times because of actually dodgy cables from, from China. But uh, um, so, so I built that, that was, that was something I built. And, um, um, this didn't, didn't quite go around to finishing it as it as it turns out. But, uh, uh, like all these things, so so sometimes I you know I get three or four hours or even half a day where I can go and do something, and um, you know I'm really happy to um, to put that out, stuff out on video. But putting the putting the time the wrap around to get the cameras set up, get the um, get everything. Um, um, you know, set up the tripod, get the lighting right, um, and then produce the video. You know, you're continuously stopping, getting the camera resetting its position to look down instead of, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. And then after that, you've got to bring all those files across into an editing piece of software. You've got to stitch it all together, edit out all the rubbish and so on. It takes a really long time. And um, so, so producing video content around this sort of stuff um, in the way that I was doing it was... You know, it's, it's really why I'm kind of disabled from doing it. Uh, you know, producing a video of uh, I don't know an hour's content can easily take four or five hours of overhead in in that time. Um, you know, you'd be really surprised at, at what it takes. Yeah. So so if I can if I can live stream this stuff, then it means that when the mood takes me, and I don't mean that I don't you know I don't mean that to sound um, you know in any way sort of lazy or anything but you know if I suddenly find myself with three or four hours and I can get on and do something if if I can use live streaming just and stick it on a video um, as I'm doing it then that that's a possibility and that's why I started testing this software and having a look at it see how it works uh, okay there we go Mark well uh, all the best okay Mark thanks very much um, so what now I know you're just testing so I thought I would mention feel free to correct me Fellow YouTubers, uh, yes, that's correct. Is the audio and visual out of sync? I have no. Uh, yeah, on my screen it looks like it might be. So that, that's interesting because um, I'm using these. These are all the things I'll have to figure out. Um, we, um, I'm using the just the in, inbuilt camera and mic 
and I'm going to guess uh, of, of the Mac here, and I'm just running the Mac software. So if the audio is running out of sync now, which I can see it is, um, I don't think it was to start with, so that's an interesting problem that I'm going to have to try and solve or read up about, because uh, this is the first time I've ever used this software. So yeah, thanks for pointing that out. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take a look at that. Um, uh, hi, Francis. Uh, Francis Jill. Franz Jill, I think. I'm, thank you. From the Netherlands. Um, let's have a look. Only using 28% CPU, so not quite sure why it's um, not syncing. Uh, Herman, hey Herman, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, what camera have I been using for your vids before? Huh, all right, do you want that story? So I actually have a plan for that. All right, I'll show you what video I was, the camera I was using before. So I started using this, which is uh, that's how I started first producing video content, which I think you can see on this camera is a uh, Liegra HF21. It's a 10, 1080p. It's one one of the better handy cam type, you know, point and shoot cameras. Uh, the problem I had with it was very limited um, zoom. I couldn't focus near, so I couldn't get too near to things. Low light performance was okay but not ideal and at the time the lighting in my room wasn't very good you can probably see that I look like I'm, I'm blown out here light wise there's actually you know, 10 spotlights up here and I've since found LED um, lamps that you know, these are the 50 mil uh, spotlight halogen types which are now LED lamps and I've been through well, I've thrown them all away now boxes of different types some I got off eBay some I bought um, so, so if anyone lives in uh, the UK um, I was very surprised to find that uh, a friend of mine said, go and buy these ones from Asda, they work really well, <laughs> which is a, suit, um, uh, a store. So I bought those, and the lighting is much, much improved. Anyway, so I, I used to use this, and to solve that lighting problem, because I do like nice tools, then I switched to using this, this thing, which is, as you can see, it's a, a more professional camera, and it works really well, but it's a, it's a big lump. It's a bit, big lump of a of a camera so you know you, and because it's uh, it's got predominantly pro features it's not like you just switch this thing on into auto mode and off you go you know you need to know how to drive it um, at least at the basic level so so I, I was using that and the problem with that is it's just big so you know you've got it on a tripod and it gets in the way and you know it's got a far reach so instead of uh, you know if I was doing this, so, you know if I'm looking at something you know, maybe, you know, this this far away. You know, this camera would be, you know, here, and I can zoom in. But, but you know, to get to, I, I could do much better and get further distance, and just just the camera would reach in because the zoom and the quality of the lens was much better. So that's that's what I have been um, using up until the point of, you know, I have, uh, the last video I produced was done on this. Um, but it, and it's a really good camera. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a great camera, actually. Really good camera. Um, but it's big. You know, and, and this room isn't huge. It's big enough camera. But I recently... Um, uh, excuse me. I recently bought this. And if, for anyone, if anyone of you are in, um, into cameras, you'll probably know what this is. Because it has a very, very good reputation. Um, for all sorts of reasons, this is a um, this is a Sony A6500. Um, it's, uh, it's I'm pretty sure it's a pro pro level camera. So it's uh, you know it's the interesting thing about this is it's mirrorless. So it to so technically when it shoots video, it works a lot like you know, the sensors right there and the uh, the um, you know lens so the lens the, the light from the lens goes straight on the sensor. And what's happening um, when it produces video is the shutter is electronic, and so the sensor is more geared towards. So, so this thing, this thing is an astonishing camera. It's, it is quite expensive. This was about um, two and a half thousand pounds, I think. Um, it shoots 4K video at, at 30 frames a second, and it's it's astonishingly good quality. 
And because I can swap lenses, then uh, I can get my, I've got a really nice 100 millimeter macro lens. So I can get down to, you know, putting an 0805 resistor you know, up on the screen like that on a board. You know, that's that sort of size. And then I can zoom in. You know, it's just, it's just, just as astonishing. So this camera is small, it's light. Um, uh, it's got a lot of capability for producing video. So I can, I can replace, and, and the low light performance of this out, out, outshines this by a long way. So I can replace, I can replace this lot, you know, and, and I was using a fairly big uh, video tripod, uh, pan head tripod with this, uh, with this, and uh, uh, just simple, simple uh, carbon fibre. I don't know where that came from, eBay somewhere. Um, tripod, and get in terms of video quality, every bit as good results. Now this also has uh, HDMI out, um, so. Um, there is a problem with this, is it doesn't go on for a long time, which might actually please a lot of people because it means I can't. Yeah, I think it, it can overheat if you're right. Well, at 4K it can overheat. I think it's okay at 1080p. So I don't. I don't think I'd be shooting in 4K or streaming in 4K. Um, I'm not even sure YouTube supports it. But um, um, with HDMI out, with the right digitizer, and I'm looking at a um, uh, a piece of kit from Blackmagic Design, which is a um, so basically a video switcher, it's kind of a bit like this software, it allows me to transition between video sources um, like I've just done there, but um, in hardware, which means I can run a, a HDMI cable straight from the camera, uh, actually I can, I can run up to eight cameras on this piece of kit, it's a small box about this big, got eight buttons on it, um, and so I can live stream the output of that, and that means in theory you know, where it's appropriate, I could use this as maybe the um, the piece of camera type camera, and I could use this, perhaps set set up on a rail on the bench. You know, so it's just convenient to, to have an overhead camera or something like that. And it's small enough to play about with those. So that that would be my kind of goal. If I if I if I can find a way a workflow to produce video um, very very um, efficiently from a time efficiency point of view, and live streaming is a big part of that. Then uh, that would be my preferred way to go. Um, it would be a little, a little raw, quite a lot more raw than than uh, than a produced video. But I guess in a way that's all right because we're all human beings. So if <laughs> if I say something wrong or get something wrong, I'll just have to apologise and move on. You know. Um, yeah. Where are we? Yeah, I guess. Oh, okay, okay, HS, thanks. So you're saying that the sync was a problem from the start of stream. That's, that's good to know. So I guess I probably need to put some settings in here. This is a problem with video code uh, encoding. Um, you know, no matter what, what you're using, uh, computers can process um, audio much, much faster than they can process video. So typically, uh, most software and most streaming setups have a audio delay feature that allow you to put in an appropriate delay for your setup because it is dependent on your setup, um, what, you know whether you get that that lip, lip syncing problem. Even even a, a, a normal TV, if you plug a uh, a set top box in and you go to the right settings, you'll find there's audio delays in there, uh, especially in uh, AV amps that kind of thing. You'll see it there. Yeah, I guess it's for that reason. Uh, Frederick, yeah, uh, the beast of the camera, the big one. Yeah, it's a, it's a big lump. You know why have I got this? We actually um, done some stuff at work. And uh, if you're going to go, you know, to a customer site, and we do B2B, so our customers range anything from public sector to banks to, you know, all sorts of corporations. Um, and you're going to do a piece to camera with a customer, so they're going to do a video testimonial or whatever. Um, yeah, never feels right to turn up with one of these. <laughs> Although actually, with this, I probably would because the benefits are so great. But uh, you know, one of these, you know, the sort of thing that the person that you know you might be interviewing. The CIO of some large bank, and you're gonna you're gonna stick this in front of them, which is the kind of camera that he's you'll run around, you know, taking a, a video shot of his kids from school. You never quite it never quite feels right from that. So, you know, a professional camera, um, it it looks correct for for what you're using it for, but also it has all the features that you need that you know, particularly around the audio and uh, you know video video output options and interfaces and, and that kind of battery life and. Oh, there's a whole whole bunch of reasons. So yes, yeah, a big camera and uh, 
it was too big for this room, really. So um, now I've got a camera finally, and this only got released in January, so this is only just out. This one, it's the third generation of this series of camera from Sony, um, and it gets rave reviews everywhere. Its video quality is outstanding. It's no good at that. You can't do high motion. It it, it doesn't quite deal with that well, but everything else is just just really really excellent. So I don't need to use this anymore. Um, so this probably this will probably get end up being used for work type stuff. Um, rather than anything else, but I actually bought it for doing the video stuff that I was doing, the video content. Uh, Brian, oh, Brian, yes, great, uh, thank you. Um, I'm not sure I'm back, I'm just testing some streaming, uh, you know, everyone keeps on uh, yeah, saying that, so I'll, I'll do my best to produce some content. I'm just trying to work out a good workflow, a good way of producing it quickly. Um, Oh, is that right? Um, so the lip, lip sync got worse as I as I switched to and fro. Yeah, well, I'm using this OBS Studio. I think with that piece of hardware that I'm talking about, um, which is made by Black Managing Design, I don't think that problem will exist. Well, I hope hope not. Anyway, whichever way, this this software I've literally only just downloaded and installed. Hook, it looked up on uh, I googled how to create a live stream, went and created a live stream, and all of a sudden I'm talking to people. So I'm sorry if it's uh, it hasn't sort of worked out. As, uh, as professionally as, uh, as it might have otherwise. Uh, I'm sure I'll get to the bottom of it. Uh, the sound, yeah, the sound is like Eddie, yes, that's right, that's what we were just discussing. There's also live streams only, he's east stuff to YouTube these days. Yeah, Lewis Rossman, isn't he great? Oh, I love that guy. Oh, it's just, <laughs> if I ever go to New York, I'm definitely going to drop in on that guy, that's for sure. I, I, I do like his videos, I have to say. Um, uh, yeah, if, if anyone, uh, Ian, Ian's mentioned that, if you, if any, anyway, just just Google Lewis Rosman. The guy does um, um, board level repairs on Apple computers, basically. He's kind of found a niche. And uh, I, I, I like the guy a lot. He's very pra pragmatic. He, he can swear a bit. He doesn't, you know, he, he just has a nice way of um, of speaking his mind. I think it's, it's awesome. But uh, he's uh, clearly, you know, he's a guy that um, I'd seen a video of him. I think it was, it was a recent one he streamed. I, was, I just went through it because it was quite long. And uh, where he was doing a repair of a motherboard that someone else had, um, you know, thrown away, couldn't repair it. And uh, he was trying to fix um, the five volt power supply problem. Uh, and it was around a buck converter, dual, uh, dual. It was a chip, single chip, dual buck converter, three point three and five volts, both from twelve. And uh, he was troubleshooting. This is by his own mission, so I don't think I'm saying anything out, out of turn here. So he's not he's not an electronics engineer, but he's got the man's got so much experience, and it's really nice to see someone like that because while he was looking for the fault, I mean, when he was um, he done all the things that I would do. You know, or you know, I would do all the same things that he did. Yeah. Even better. But when it got to um, all right, so the enable signal's there. The chip's got power. The other channel is working. Uh, why don't I get anything out of the five volt rail? My next instinct would be to just whack the scope on the um, on the drive to the FETs, the, the, the switcher. And uh, he didn't do that. And I sort of you know, sort of screaming, not screaming at the video, but in my head, I was thinking, I oh, just put the scope on there and see if it's doing anything, the odds are uh, good. But as it turned out, um, he didn't do that, uh, but as it turned out, when he, he re-inspected the board visually under his microscope, he found a place where someone had, I don't know what they'd done to the connector, and it just all the pins were bent over, so so the chip had obviously just shut down on overload, so so he wouldn't have seen any output, and that and actually, as it turns out, if, if I would have followed my instincts, I could have ended up assuming, wrongly, that that chip was faulty. So anyway, that, the, the point is, Lewis. Yeah, he's uh, he's uh, uh, he's a, he's a guy who's got an awful lot of experience, and you can just tell that in the way he behaves, um, the way he talks, and, and and just the way he works through things, um, repairing this stuff. Yeah, he's it's, it's a really good watch. Interesting, interesting guy. Very nice guy as well, from from what I can tell from the video content. Okay, just yeah, yeah. That's the so you're you're talking about streaming. Um, as I understand it from YouTube, I haven't tried it. I don't even know if this one will end up on my channel. Um, um, I, I'm hoping that when I just stream something, because you know, someone mentioned earlier, and they're right that if uh, 
if they're not online, how can they see the video? But I think I can, as a setting, I can make it just record and publish to my YouTube channel. Um, so that to me would be a really cool way of making video if I can if I can figure out how to make it all work. Herman, um, uh, maybe scripting. Uh, no, <laughs> I've been down that route before. Um, so I I went on some um, really basic. Um, a TV presenter training, not because I want to be a TV presenter, you understand? This was more about, you know, I, I would spend a lot of time going er and um, and I'm still doing now probably. Um, like that, just like that, right, I just caught myself. So, um, um, what were we talking about? Scripting. Yeah, so so we done a really interesting exercise at work where, you know, I've, I've made a point, you know, kind of, we've got a lot of good people at work that, that, that have a lot to say and so we, we, we spent some time in the in a few workshops doing video and uh, undoubtedly if you're doing a piece to camera and I have to call this a piece to camera I'm not going to talk to you about doing this if you script something you try to follow the script and what happens is you spend your time focusing on the words in the script and that's really bad if you have to t do a second take you do not ever want to have to repeat the same words because it means you have to learn your lines and that's like being an actor in a film and you know, I don't know if you know that film takes a year or two years to make. So each scene, you know, is, that might be five minutes of dialogue, might take a week to make. Or, you know, so you've got all this time to learn that stuff. When you're doing this kind of stuff, scripting definitely does not work. Um, you need to have a basic outline of, of what you want to talk about. Um, it's always good to prepare uh, presentation content. That's another reason why I like this idea that I can just transition over, maybe like this, just to a PowerPoint presentation. Um, or you know some other on-screen format just to um, just to be able to communicate information that I can't verbalise very well or, or get across. So so yeah, I've I've tried video scripting. Um, the, the the professional advice um, that is given to you um, in television presenting is definitely don't work from script when you're doing a PTC. When you're acting, it's a different thing. Uh, but even good actors uh, are, are generally asked to improvise. So if you ever watch a film, say with, you know, one of the famous Hollywood type actors, you'll see Liam Nielsen or you know Eddie Murphy, or you, you they'll be given a script, but they're expected to interpret it into them, and that's what makes it them. That's why when you watch a film that Liam Nielsen's in, for example, you know that it's him because it's it's his articulation of the story, um, and he'll follow the guides roughly, but he'll, he won't say it word for word, and in all reality, um, you know, a writer could not possibly write the correct words. You know, part, there's certain sections of, of a script that you would, a joke, for example, or, you know, a, a particular line, you know, if you've got, if it's a comedy type script and you've got that kind of stuff, you know, there's certain lines and stuff you would say, I guess if you look at anyone that knows Fools and Horses, you know, he, that writer, I can't remember his name, exceptionally talented guy, um, and, you know, um, the guy, the actors in there would definitely ad hoc what they were doing, but there were certain things at certain time that were written and they had to be got across. So, uh, you yeah. know, anyway, that's uh, so yeah, scripting, uh, no, that's definitely, definitely wouldn't be a way to go for me because, um, you know, I, I actually want to move away from doing multiple takes. I mean, you know, if I, if I say something wrong, so like what? I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not expecting me to say, you know, go and put this probe on here and then people go and do it. And I say, oh no, don't do that, that's the 10,000 volt line, you kill yourself. You know, I'm not doing that kind of stuff um, and I'd be, high, you know, I'd be, I'd be sort of worried and shocked actually if uh, anyone started following my advice like that. So, uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, no, I'd, I'd, I think, I think live streaming is, uh, yeah, it's, it's all the way it's going. Um, the, other, the other thing about live streaming is more engaging, I think it's more engaging. Um, in, in the stuff that I watch, so um, uh, yeah, get my son to help if I can get him motivated. Yeah, I think Eddie, that might be a good idea. Um, I think the uh, Brian uh, unscripted nature of that Jerry's videos, but obviously the amount of effort is obvious. Yeah, I, I you, you know the scripting, I purposefully don't do it. Um, I I spent some time trying it. I ended up writing little crib sheets of this and so on but it doesn't work and actually when I when I got some professional training and that was me really just going to learn from professionals about you know this kind of stuff and answering those kind of questions that are, that are difficult to answer on your own uh, they said absolutely scripts you shouldn't 
you, you know, definitely not. Unless you're, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're factor, if you're a news presenter, you've got to read facts. That is a fact. You have to use more IQ. You have to know how to do that. Um, but if you're, if you're, you know, imparting knowledge or comedy or you know, personality type stuff, uh, really, you should just say it. And uh, uh, my observation in life uh, with live chat is once I, you know, with this live broadcasting is once I get talking, I'm very happy just to, to talk stuff. And I've got no script here. I'm just saying stuff. And actually, the, my prompt, my order of the things I should be saying is coming from the live chat. <laughs> over here on the right, so uh, yeah, only yeah, Mark, only horse, fools and horses is absolutely just awesome. Very difficult to um, find another 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 comedy like that, and that, that that's the. I'm, I'm really annoyed because I know the the writer um, just recently passed away, didn't he? I, I just can't remember his name, but an incredibly talented guy, um, obviously to be able to write stuff like that. Um, Nice work on the PLL project. What was the PLL project, uh, Supra? Um, the PLL project. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Sorry, I can't remember. Did I? Did I do something? I can't remember. It wouldn't surprise me. I'm getting old, getting a few grey hairs. Um, Herman, yeah, yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, well, we, you know, we'll, we'll play a bit. I think the uh, the live streaming is the is the way to. Uh, Way to go, based on uh, based on this. <coughs> oh, sorry. Yes, Mark. Okay. Sorry. There you go. There's me thinking I was more important than I am. <laughs> Just joking. All right. Well, um, I'm not sure I've got much else to say. Really, I'm just wondering if we've got anything else to uh, to tease you or tempt or tease you with. Oh yeah, this this is really cool. Let me show you this. So as well as bashing around with electronics, um, I do like to mess about with the odd bit of mechanical engineering, and I've got um, I've got many of the parts I've accumulated and metalwork and so on to build some kind of CNC machine, um, probably just a CNC router type thing, like a proper heavy duty one. Anyway, I I was playing around with this uh, the other day, which is actually this is a uh, uh, you know. A, you know, you can get stepper motor drivers that are like a chip, and then you can get these things, and these are called micro stepper motors, and they're actually quite good. It's, uh, there's a whole, there's a whole new set of stuff that you have to know about how this stuff works uh, in order to understand it. So I would cover some of that because it's quite interesting. Um, but anyway, this micro stepping basically turns this almost into uh, a linear motor rather than a stepping motor. Almost, I say, well, it's not quite, but pretty close. Um, and your interface to it is really dead easy. Once you power it up, use the motor. Um, you've got three control lines, which are you know, they're optical, you know, driving LEDs basically. Uh, one is enable, which puts the motor into hold, so it locks the motor into position. Uh, one is step, so you step it and it goes. And the other one's direction, so it's really easy to drive from an Arduino or any other microcontroller. You don't have to worry about all the, the complexities that goes on inside here. And there's a lot to know about micro-stepping these motors um, in terms of acceleration and deceleration and you know, current and current regulation and uh, stuff. Loads of stuff. So yeah, that, that's quite interesting. Yeah. Yeah, not quite sure if I've got anything else here that's worth talking about. As I said uh, earlier, it might be worth repeating. I've got you know a wall full stacked half half high by about a meter and a half wide of Agilent and a few other variations of test equipment of all sorts, everything from uh, all right, loads of stuff, power supplies that need fixing, um, or you know, got faults on them and so on. Uh, they're the ones I generally buy because they're interesting because you can work on them, produce video content. Uh, it's frequency counters, meters, scopes, uh, audio analyzers, all that stuff, loads, loads of uh, other sort of RF stuff you wouldn't necessarily use. Anyway, all right. I'm probably I was going to run out of things to say now. I think uh, where I go. Uh, so super. Alf, thank you very much. Um, I'll uh, I'll definitely get some more projects on the go. It's just work commitments, as I say. Um, 
Yeah, thanks, uh, um, Curtis. The HP and Keithley distortion comparisons. Now, I've, I've actually bought since another, the next model up. You know, if, if you recall, I talked about two HP models, and I had the, the newer one of the really older ones. And I've actually bought, um, I haven't even plugged it in yet, which is really bad. I just bought it because it was there and it was the right price, so I grabbed it. Um, the, the next version up, which I can't remember the model number, but it's the same sort of size, big lump of a, of a, of a you know, 19 inch rack thing with LED um, digital display and a whole bunch of big buttons. And that's the, that's the next one up. I'm intrigued to see what's inside it myself because I think that's probably going to be built just as well as the, the, the one that I used, the 339A, I think it was. I really love the way HP used to build their stuff in, in, in that era. And uh, yeah, so. <laughs> Am I sponsored by Yorkshire Tea? <laughs> yeah, I, I wish. I wish, yeah. Uh, no, no, not at all. I don't know why that's here. Let me see why that's here. Ah, uh, why that's here probably is because um, I've got, as you can see, a load of mess, and it doesn't just stop here. It sort of extends around, um, and I and I I half tidied up the room, and then I stopped, and then I made a big mess again. So um, comes back to the time. Uh, I'm generally quite messy anyway, to be to be honest with you. In, in this kind of environment, I like to put things down, and know where they are. And then, then I like to forget where they are, which is uh, fairly common. But um, yeah, I, I got some of those tins um, just to put stuff in that I haven't got around to putting putting in yet. So, so that's that's why it's there. I should put some tape over it, right? <laughs> uh, Brian, eyeballing is great too. Yeah. Okay. Frederick, yeah, I will see you soon. I'm sure. Is it the 8903, uh, Curtis? Yeah, it probably is. Um, uh, hang on a minute. I'll tell you. 8903A. Let me just pull it up in the web browser and I'll tell you. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, it's that. So, yeah, I, I've got one of those um, which, uh, which I want to uh, have a play around with. Um, I, I've never shown this before. I don't think I've ever talked about it. Um, about... Um, Ooh, it must be 10 years ago, I, I embarked on this, this project to build um, a valve, a tube amplifier, tube valve amplifier, whatever you can call it. But uh, as, as a typical, when I, when I get these mad ideas, I, I kind of went over, over the top. Um, so I built two monoblocks. <laughs> They're this size. Each one is class A, um, 100 watts. Um, they're powered by each one. So each one is one channel. Uh, God knows how much it weighs, about 50 kilos, or uh, 40 kilos maybe. Um, it's powered by eight um, KT88s per channel, running in pure class A. Um, and uh, I built it as a learning exercise because I kind of understood the valve technology, but uh, I'd never really poked around with the high voltages and um, you know the, the, the kind of the way the circuits work. So fortunately, I had a really good friend of mine um, who I've known for many, many, many years that taught me lots and lots about analog electronics. And he gave me the guidance um, I needed to um, to actually design the thing. And in, in fact, he gave me the you know on a piece of paper or a pencil, just sketched out the front end, um, which uh, which which worked out really well. And the thing sounded absolutely awesome. But uh, like a typical project, I got right the way through it. All the mechanics of it, built you know all the physical chassis and everything. Um, and, but where I stopped was I, I ran into a problem that the, the bulk caps that are used for smoothing the HT, I physically didn't have a, a good way, a satisfactory way of mounting them. And so I stopped. And they're, they're out in my garage here, just up on a shelf, carefully covered over. Uh, they're really nice, quite proud of them. They're, they're, they're big, totally big, totally impractical. Uh, but I would definitely, um, come back to the analyzer, I'd definitely like to... Um, um, Check their performance um, and see how well they perform from a uh, from a distortion or a harmonic distortion and from a noise point of view. So yeah, that's definitely uh, definitely on my on my plan uh, at some point to get get those things out and do that. So big monstrous things, <laughs> um, and you know I, I have no idea if I'll ever you know. I, the, by the way, one of the reasons why I shelved them, you know, I, li I love music and I would like to have a really first class hi fi system. Um, but you, as you earlier saw, my son, he um, he's 13 now, uh, and I built those. I started. Oh, there you go. I started building those things before he was actually born. 
so that's it. So yeah, that's what I've been getting on for 14 years. Um, ha having having tube amplifiers anywhere in the house that that put out that much heat when you've got young kids running around is just mad. You know, it's, it's dangerous. And uh, and while I built the chassis, I hadn't built a top. So you know, put your fingers in there and end up with 600 volts at uh, you know with with, with, with uh, you know I'd say. Well, with the, the bulk caps, you know, many, many kilojoules of energy uh, available. It's just a very dangerous thing. So, uh, yeah, so um, I think two different approaches, but HP is very comfortable. Right? Curtis, yeah, I, yeah, it looks, it looks good. I, I haven't tried it. Um, I, I really like the, the way the 339A works. When I first checked it and I got the, the Keithley, I thought, you know what, I'll get rid of the 339 because it's too big. But I couldn't bring myself to sell it because actually I like the analog meter and I like the way it works. Um, Brian McConnor, no fake tech, please. Uh, how do you mean? What fake tech? <laughs> Brian, yeah, <laughs> I know how that feels. Yeah, I got those those projects all around me that are unfinished. That's, uh, JG, thank you very much. Nice to nice to see from you. Yes. Oscillator. No fake tech please. Oscillator. Brian McConnell. No, no, I'm still not with you. You have to you have to you know get get it into my my thick skull, I'm afraid. Uh, first for sound a is a room with acoustic absorbing. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. To, to to do it well you need um you, you do need um a good environment. Uh, yeah, it's it's a big hobby in its own right. I'm not sure. I'm not one of those um how do I put this without offending people? Um, I'm, I'm not one of those audio fools. I think that's what Dave Jones calls them, or other people call them. I, you know, I don't buy into the idea that you could spend a hundred dollars on a um, a monster cable and get you know improve your audio. It just it's just you know there's marketing and then there's actual practical reality. And uh, here's here's the thing: it's a well proven fact that like drugs. Audio files, yeah, audio files or audio fools. <laughs> you replace the I I L with double O, <laughs> the I L E with double O. -L. Um, the th thing is, you know, these these companies, fair play to them, they they market the hell out of these things, and th this kind of stuff is, you know, marketing or you know, if you believe, if um, you know, if you if you if you take a drug that believes is going to cure a problem, there is a chance it will, and you know. One of the one of the types of tablets a doctor will prescribe is a sugar tablet, it's just because you think you've got a problem, um, and uh, you know, and it can help the psychosomatic um, mentality. That you know, I think that translates into marketing, if you, and then into buying into your buying mentality. So if you've got a great love for music and you're and you've got the expendable income and you go and buy shed loads of really beautiful hi-fi and so on and so forth. If someone convinces you that if you replace your cables with these these other cables, you know, if you replace your speaker cables with that you're currently using with these these new ones that have got this, I don't know, anti diode rectifying, you know, marketing wank type type crap wrapped around it, and you pay your three hundred dollars for them, right? I promise you, when you bring them home. You will connect them up and you will sit there and you will listen to the record that you listened yesterday or whatever it is you're playing and you will believe it's better. You absolutely will because if you, if you don't, you're, um, you, know, you, you, you realise you've been duped and people don't like that. So, uh, so you know, there is, there is you know, of course there is a level of quality and quality there is diminishing returns so you can go from... You know, your average hi-fi that you buy in Argos, you know, don't call it hi-fi, the music plate you buy in Argos, you know, it's going to sound pretty crap compared to, you know, some high-quality piece of hi-fi. But to go from some high-quality piece of hi-fi equipment that, say, costs $2,000 to one that costs $5,000, you know, unless the one that $2,000 was, you know, sold on marketing rank, unless it was just a piece of crap inside and it was all wrapped up and looked nice. You know, you, you it just gets to a point where you, your ears just can't can't discriminate. And I, you know, I play guitar, um, and I, you know, I, a long time ago, now when I was when I was young and able to not able to do it, but when I could be bothered to do it, I used to play in gigs and stuff like that. And um, 
the interesting thing about guitar is if you if you get yourself a nice setup, so let's say you've got a Stratocaster and you've got you know a couple of effects pedals and you've got a I don't know a, a Marshall head and a four by four or whatever it might be, you know you and you buy that because you think it just sounds like the best thing ever and you, and you play it. Um, you know, there'll be a time, probably not too far after that, maybe three weeks later or three months later, where you're playing it going, I just don't like the sound, it jars with me, it's just... And so you get this cycle of buying this and buying that and trying this and changing your guitar and doing this and doing that. And the reality is, is what happens is it sounds exactly the same as it did the day you fell in love with it, but your sense, you know, because of things you've heard before, um, changes and and people don't realize that so there's a really easy test you can do it you have to force yourself to do it and, and I've often said to people do this and it's a really good thing to do so if you've got a sound system an old-fashioned type sound system where you've got bass middle and treble or a graphic equalizer you know go and switch on your favorite piece of music and uh, you know you'll listen to your stereo you're happy with it right and then then just bastardize the sound just you know take out the mids or put all the mids in and take the lows out and half the highs or do something where you where you kind of go oh, it's, you know not so it's unbearable but so it's oh, that doesn't sound right and then force yourself to listen to it for a couple of weeks put it on every day and listen to it and listen to it and listen to it and if you if you use it listen to a radio or anything you know music in the background so just force yourself and watch what happens because you're acclimatized to it and that becomes the norm then put it all back, you know, when you when you kind of go, okay, well, this doesn't jar anymore, I can live with it, you know, as long as you as long as you can get over it psychologically. Then put it back to how you had it before and you won't like it. And that is that's a fact. You know, it's it's just uh, one of those things. So yeah, that's that kind of whole audio fool thing is um uh, you know, it's just just there, yeah, tea tea fills, yeah. <laughs> uh, there we go. Anyway, cables it it does I'm not sure if that doesn't or does matter. Cables matter a lot, but to a point. Um, uh, Safist uh, 555. Yeah, cables do matter, but only to a point. They certainly don't matter to the tune of $100 for a speaker cable. I can tell you that now. Um, so, you know... You know, when you when you when you've got a, a physical speaker, for for you know, this is just one example. But when you've got a physical speaker, um, one of the one of the most important um, reproduction uh, characteristics of a speaker is damping, particularly at low frequencies. At high frequencies as well, at low frequencies, and that's because you know your your cone has got a physical mass and it's moving. And I'm sure everyone that's looking at this channel has got, got interest knows about you know the basic theory of electromagnetism so if you drive your speaker forward with you know a big pulse of current um, or a big side of current its propensity will be to push back and as you as you um, as the sine wave drops off and drops back down to near zero if your amplifier or your speaker cable is um, you know it's got some resistance to it some impedance of that frequency then the amplifier's impedance won't be able to suppress the movement of the, the speaker cone, and so you get this, you get ringing basically. Uh, so actually, speaker cables do do matter a lot. And uh, you know what people don't realise, you go and buy these really expensive cables, and and you know that uh, speaker cables are a good example. And there's all sorts of marketing variations of it. The very best speaker cables you can get um, are, you know, in the UK we call this twin and earth. So if you go and buy 6 mil or 4 mil twin and earth, um, uh, single strand, big heavy lumps of copper, I promise you that's the best kind of speaker you can have because there's virtually no capacitance because they run in parallel, so they're not really any of these Chris Wasp weaved sort of marketing, sort of marketed rubbish. Um, they can well and truly handle the current. Um, and so, yeah, they, they matter, but, but, but beyond that, it, it really doesn't matter. You know, if you, you cable cables and then low, low, low level, uh, low signal cables um, matter for noise, but they do not matter for quality. You know, so if you've got a cable that, that reduces the quality of your signal source to its destination in the cable, um, if there's only a couple of explanations. It's really poor quality copper, so it's you know it's probably not you know some kind of compound. A typical cheap, really cheap Chinese cable can be like that, or it's um, um, it's too long and there's too much capacitance, 
or there's an impedance mismatch between the cable and, and you know the, the signal. That's that's quite common. Those those are more the things, but you know most of those things can be solved with very low cost solutions, and you can make very high quality stuff. The best ones are Monster Cables. Um, I'm saying a brand here, so I better not say the brand. I use Monster Cables as a good example of expensive brand, and they do make some some nice stuff. Uh, although I'm dubious about the price. But those kind of companies, when HDMI came out, they started selling the premium brand HDMI cables. And I remember going into a store buying a TV, and the guy spent five minutes you know, t telling me the technical reasons why this HDMI cable will give me better picture, and I should really consider it. And uh, so I, let, I just let him tell me. And I said, oh, okay, I understand. And then I was asking questions, well, what does it mean and why? And he, he had all the spill. And it, and it must have been so. Because it, so then I, then I explained at the end, I said, you know, you appreciate that HDMI, <laughs> and he didn't know any of these terms, so he sort of looked at me and I think just walked away at the end. But I said something along the lines of, you know, this is an HDMI cable, which means there's three, three LD, uh, LD um, V pairs carrying digital signals. Digital signals are either on or they're off. So the digital signal either gets there or it doesn't. And if, it, if it's borderline, so it's dropping in and out, uh, then you just see noise and you'll see it instantly. There'll be no, you know, subtle improvements there. So, so uh, you know, it is, it is a problem that, that people get duped with this sort of stuff. It's, uh, it's a shame. 8-bit ICS, uh, it's some, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I hate surround sound system with mini speakers and the bypass subwoofer, no mid range, no back. Yeah, yeah, near, yeah, near, yeah, horrible. Ever watched Tesla 500? Mm, Brian, no, I, ha I may have done, I don't remember the name though. Um, for example, in cheap cables, mini cables for audio, is CCA, copper, clad, aluminium. Yeah, yeah, that's a good example. Yeah, if they mix, if they mix uh, copper and aluminium, then you know, you get pretty poor. Conduction, and that's never going to be good for a noise point of view. Yeah. Uh, Cirrus, where have I been for the last two years then? Uh, just work commitments, uh, honestly, I've been wanting to do it. So I wonder, I've said this quite a few times now on this stream, but uh, one of the reasons why I'm actually here streaming is because I wanted to test live stream software and just some good folks started talking to me. So I've been here now, I said, oh bloody hell, for an hour and a half ranting on. About stuff. So, so yeah, I'm I'm trying to develop a workflow that makes it easier for me to produce video content while I'm working, while I'm doing stuff, um, and then I can then I can just broadcast it, and this and the YouTube system will just record it for me. So that that will work, and if I can fit that in without having to go through all the other stuff I described earlier on around the workflow involved in producing video, then I'm much more likely to be able to produce content while I'm still busy at work. So that was the plan. I run salesman to convince you that. To get a better base response of a hundred pound digital lead, yep, yeah, digital. That's that's the point. Uh, they don't quite get the whole one and zero thing. It is very funny. Uh, was you a Tandy customer back in your teens? Uh, no, no. I well, if for sometimes if you needed something, I'd nip in there. And I, I know in I know when I was about, um, uh, I, I'm going to say eight or nine, um, and we used to go. Um, <laughs> on holiday, quite unquote, to, to my mum's uncle's house in Northampton, so only 50, 60 miles away, which is just a break away from home. And uh, we used to stay there for a week or so with him, and I think my mum used to visit him, to, you know, because he was a little bit elderly and stuff. And they had, a, the only whole store that I had any interest in the whole of Northampton was a Tandy store, because it was the only thing that I had any, any interest in at all. So I just, um, I used to go in there, say, and buy something, so I could just go back to the house where, you know, my uncle, who was lovely, but, you know, he's an old man, and I was a little kid, and I wanted to do stuff, so, uh, so, uh, so, yeah, no, but, um, no, I've always, I've always, unfortunately, had, um, uh, how do I put this, I've always had expensive taste for tools and for, for things that I understand, um, so, you know, to go and buy a 4001 Logic IC in a packet for pound fifty. You know, just just you know, wouldn't be nicely wrapped up. I'm paying, you know, one pound forty for the packet. And, um, uh, you know, it doesn't doesn't feel right. Uh, never felt right. So so no, I didn't really buy stuff from there, and I wouldn't go in there and buy stuff that, uh, that I would want to use myself. I, and I don't mean that in disrespect to Tandy or Radio Shack or whatever the, the equivalent name is. So good for some stuff. Um, 
but no, not not everything. So no, no, not really. I think um, I, I think I could say. Uh, I sell directional audio cables, meaning that there's an arrow pointing. Yes, absolutely. Uh, okay, so I've seen that directional cables. They claim something like uh, you know the carbon the carbon composition of the, the material, you know, in a certain direction, you know, has a point like a diode. Yeah, and it rectifies the signal. I mean, it's just just it's just it's laughable crap, really. But yeah, hey, hey, if they can make money out of it, and people are stupid enough to buy it, then fair enough, fair enough. What can I say? Um, still got your jumper resistor driver in a black box. Hey, thanks for this. Yeah, I've sold a ton of those things as well. They, they, I, I don't want that to sound disrespectful. You know, I, I do appreciate the stuff that people buy because it because it does. You know, I, I, I will buy stuff, um, you know, for the channel. And actually, I've spent a lot more money on than I've ever made out of anything I've ever sold. But, it, you know, any, anything that takes the edge off it is nice. It's also nice to, to know that, you know, if someone, someone finds that useful one's time, um, you know, yeah, that's been cool. Uh, Brian, yeah, uh, me too. <laughs> 15 kilohertz, that's my lot. Uh, Cirrus, uh, all right, nice one. Take it easy, mate. Uh, Jerry, love to see you. Actually, go. Really hope to see. Yeah, I'll try. I'll try. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get this, um, get this streaming working, so I can do something. Yeah, you know, it's got, got got a bit more um, practicality to it. Um, right now, this is a pretty poor uh, quality video I'm, I'm producing here. I'm not really producing. As I said, I was just testing earlier. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Look, I, I've been at this an hour and a half now. Um, 600 and twisted pair, yay! Yay for the GP BT telephone engineer. Brian, you're not a BT telephone engineer, are you? <laughs> yeah. All right, so I, I'm going to end the stream now. Um, I've, I've done some testing. Um, I'm sorry to have dragged so many of you onto a video stream where I was only testing, and now I've just ended up talking about a load of rubbish. So, uh, um, yeah, you're very welcome, guys. Um, thanks very much for listening. Thank you for the comments and giving me something to actually talk about because I'm not sure what I want to talk about. Um, I'll, tr I'll try and do some research on the software, this software and this setup, and poke around with it a bit more and see if I can learn more. And I'll maybe try and stream in another week or so just to test test other stuff. Um, all right. Um, thanks very much. I'm going to call the stream an end now. <laughs>